everyone welcome back to cybersecurity tv uh, so previous few weeks like you know we have been talking about the tor browser privacy anonymity etc this this week we are going to shift topic a little bit uh, based on the demand so i'm going to go back to the waf bypass that we have been talking about right uh, so so far we have learned a lot about what are the server side filters and mostly web application firewall uh, that we use like you know develop the rules and then we analyze the rules and we try to bypass those rules so usually when someone attacks uh, the application uh, the waf would prevent after the after the traffic or the payload has reached to the server side or almost server side right so that's one of the obviously basic technology and 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 everyone uses it but then one other technology that everyone started using uh, probably uh, like you know many years ago was the client side filtering and that that like you know gives or protects the user uh, when when the users are like you know even the traffic is is going beyond to the browsers or like you know from the client to the server and that's that's kind of new approach and there are a lot of like you know scripts and extension all the browser offers nowadays uh, that will that will help them uh, prevent from the those kind of attacks so for example like dom based xss uh, how do, how does like nothing is going on the server so how do you protect uh, a user from the dom based xss it's mostly using those some of those like you know client side filtering techniques uh, the other thing we have also like you know seen in our previous video is about the security headers so security headers are usually uh, used by the browsers to prevent uh, some of like you know provide defense in depth from certain attacks so that's that's another topic uh, like you know why client side filtering and client side uh, protection is is getting more and more uh, familiar so you must be wondering like okay why do we care like why do we need to learn about all this uh, as an attacker or as a pen tester why, why do you need to learn about this so the reason being is unless you don't know how this mechanism works you are not really going to be able to bypass those right you uh, so when you want to bypass something uh, and and you are doing black box then the chances or probability of you getting succeed is very very less however if you are doing like a gray box or white box pen test where you have access to the source code in this example let's say we have got access to whatever the client side filters these browsers are using then it's easier for us to bypass them one caveat that client side filter has opposed to the server side is writing client side filters are not simple uh, the reason being is suppose you you want to be very restrictive you want to block any malicious payload on the browser if if the filter or the extension does that then it might block basic user experience uh, so user might or might not be able to even like you know some basic things and then they get annoyed so the rules on the client side have to be very very generic uh, which should like you know which should balance like uh, it should balance with security as well as with the user experience and that's where as an attacker you have a you have a like you know a real good chance to bypass some of those because the rules are are, are very very generic so no script if you have heard of uh, is the uh, like you know client side filtering tool and this was i guess developed in 2006 by Giorgio Menon and and this was very popular and it says like you know this is the best security you can get in the web browser it allows potential malicious web content to run only from the site you trust and protect yourself against xss and other web security exploits so this was like you know more of like a whitelist based security tools or or allow list based security tools so you allow list certain website that you trust and for all the other website uh, like you know it will block all the malicious javascript content java flash no one uses it nowadays but yeah it does all these things and the fun fact uh, this is also in tor uh, which we have been talking about right so that's how uh, tor is super secure and super anonymous and and provide a lot of privacy because of this these tools which are already embedded into it so this no script uh, is a is a browser add-on for the firefox right so you can easily add to the firefox even though we uh, like you know our focus is always on the bypassing these filters and etc I think there is one advantage of us using this in our normal browser as well because while browsing probably we 
we want to be uh, we don't want to be a victim of some some attack as well so this is actually a good extension to have or like you know to have maybe you can uh, will I'll also show you like you know some different policies that you can configure in this extension uh, but yeah that's like you know on a side note that yeah maybe you can you should be using this uh, extension as well and as you can see here it provides like you know uh, pretty much all the uh, configuration you want to do so you can decide yourself which sites you trust oh sorry uh, wait yeah which site you trust and don't let anyone unknown or untrusted site to execute scripts or dangerous capabilities in your browser and here you can also globally configure the permissions they have like you know very uh, uh, very granular or very detailed feature set in terms of what the security offers now the reason I'm, I'm talking about all this and and reason we are learning about this is because I in in the like you know I want to teach you like how do you analyze these rules and then we analyze how do we how are we going to bypass this I think that's the key goal uh, from our session that we are going to take away so uh, uh, of course as I said like you know here are the anti-xss protection exception uh, so you can analyze this uh, as i said earlier uh, regex i think we did cover regular expression uh, in in some of our previous sessions so yeah you you do need to learn or have good understanding on the regex in case you want to analyze all of this request now one other thing uh, that no script also provides is like you know that they, they have really really good xss protection and if i may show you here so they have like you know different trust levels and there are four preset trust levels first one is default uh, as the name implies this will allow scripts uh, or java or flash from any sites that you trust but then if you are visiting unknown sites then it will not be able to perform any malicious actions against you uh, temporary trusted so like you know for time being for temporary basis this will be uh, counted as a trusted service uh, sorry trusted like you know uh, mode so it will not allow anyone to run any malicious script but then after you close the browser and reopen it will go back to the default mode trusted is going to be like you know uh, permanent high trust level enabling JavaScript and other active capabilities persisting across browser restart right so even if you restart this will be trusted and untrusted is zero trust level that's what we call like zero trust security which blocks every capability including rendering of the plain HTML frames and alternate so this uh, you might not like this because this will block a lot of HTML and stuff like that so the the UI might not get like you know that much better but yeah and then you also have custom if you are not if you want to not to choose any of this then you can obviously uh, customize your policies now contextual policies are even more interesting because uh, they have given the example let's say you want to uh, enable script for twitter.com only if you are visiting a specific site so it will only allow uh, uh, scripts from this site but block any other if you are going from the Twitter so that's what the contextual policies are uh, you can also uh, do the preset uh, customization even though it's not recommended power users may customize also the built-in presets and the modified capability permission will be automatically applied to all the sites which trust level preset has been or will be assigned to they also have lane protections you have pre pre uh, preferences editor we saw that earlier and then you also have bulk disabling restriction because sometimes you're in a hurry on a complex workflow spanning multiple redirection through different website which must succeed or no matter what so in that case you can disable the restriction in the bulk so these are uh, some of the features that this offers now what I want to do is probably in the in the coming video we want to analyze these rules uh, not just this but we are also going to analyze some of the other add-ons which uh, Microsoft uh, Explorer or Edge offers then then few other uh, uh, extension which is offered by Chrome because that's the most used browser so we are going to uh, analyze their code and their scripts and, and see how we can find the bypass out of those uh, rules because 
if you if you can find the bypass then half a job already done uh, so that's yeah i think i think that will be an interesting area uh, do let me know if you are interested in going further in, into this or would you prefer going back to the tour uh, i would love your comments and based on that so i can plan it out uh, hopefully you like this video please hit the thumbs up if you do and i'll see you all next monday thank you bye